In this video, we're going to look at five different ways to assign colors and materials using the Model tab in GrabCAD Print. To do this, I'm going to select my first prop. I'm going to open the Model Settings tab, and I'm brought to my first available menu, Tray Materials. This one's pretty straightforward. I can choose any one of my preloaded base materials in my printer. So in this case, I will choose Verocyan Vivid. Moving on to the next prop, and our next option is Color Picker. I can use my Hue Slider and Selection tool to pick a unique color, or I could input a hex value, RGB, or HSLA value. Also in this menu, if I have a clear material loaded, in this case VeroClear, I can control the transparency of the model by using the transparency slider. And you'll see it updated on my main screen. Let's go back to opaque. And since I also have Agilus loaded, in this case Agilus 30 clear, I can change the shore level. So let's make this part shore A50. Since we're using a clear material to make it softer, the softer I make my part, the more clear it's going to get. At the bottom of the color picker, we see a selected color and an actual color. This is showing you the color you selected on an RGB screen versus the color you will likely get from a CMYK printer. Onto the third prop in our third menu, Digital Materials. This menu allows you to mix two to three materials at once. So let's do Magenta Vivid and Yellow Vivid to get a list of preset material combinations. So in this case, I can go from Strong Purplish Red, Strong Reddish Orange, all the way to a Vivid Orange Yellow. This part, I'm going to select Vivid Orange under my fourth part and fourth menu, CMYK input. The CMYK input menu allows you to specifically control the percentage of each color material added to make a unique color or transparency. So I can use Vero, Civ Vero Cyan Vivid, Vero Magenta Vivid, Vero Yellow Vivid. I could use uh, black, but I do not currently have one loaded in this configuration. I use Vero Pure White and T for transparency, which is Vero Clear. So let's create a custom color. Let's do 15% Cyan V, 15% Magenta V. We'll do 30% Yellow, brings us to 60. So let's do another 20% of White and 20% of Clear. Notice how I won't be able to apply this color until my total mix equals 100%. I get a preview of the color, in this case kind of a tan brown. I hit apply, and it's applied to my part. Onto the last part, and our last option is the Pantone menu. In this menu, I can type in a specific Pantone code, a hex code, or an RGB value to quickly find an associated Pantone code or I can search through this slider to find different Pantone codes through the menu. For this example, I'm gonna look for Pantone 2249, which is kind of this greenish color. And you'll notice next to each of these Pantone options is this indicator. This indicator to displays how accurately this color is going to match when printed to a Pantone swatch. So a three-quarter circle, like the one highlighted right now, indicates an accurate match and differences are generally minor and acceptable. If we look for another one on the list here, we've got a half. We'll see minor visible difference might be seen between the printed color and the Pantone swatch. Acceptability will vary by job. We could see a quarter, and then also if we go to the bottom, we have an exclamation point that says major visible difference might be seen between a printed color and the Pantone swatch. 
And again, the acceptability varies by job. The Pantone menu does not mean that you're able to print every single Pantone color accurately, but what it does do is allow you to more easily predict what colors are going to be accurately represented by your printer prior to ever needing to print them. So I select the 2249C, and I've applied this particular Pantone color, which is an accurate match to my final prop.